on YouTube channel where we've been talking about sustainable farming practices, sustainable energy efficiency, and water conservation. Today, our topic is going to be on fish farming as a way of sustainable farming method. And we're going to introduce you and help you understand how to produce fingerling. Fingerling in this region, which is going to be help us also fight climate change within this region. As you always know that our fishing industry has really suffered within this region. And the overfishing in this area has led to the declining in fish population in the lake. We are using this as a model to help, help us reduce the pressure on the lake while increasing food. So with this kind of innovation, they are so really important. Please, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and share the link. Leave us a comment for whatever you have, you have learned in this channel. I'm your host, Anne O'Kill. Welcome. Uh, morning everyone. My name is Thomas Owen, uh, the chairman of Game Farmer Center. Today we are going to have our first event, that is the ecotourism. And the first destination now we will be heading to Tonga, where we are going to the fish industry. The ecotourism is going to attract and we are trying to market our products which we have been doing for the last 15 years to show that Nyanza we can feed ourselves under the food security. So that's the exact thing we are doing. So I hope we'll enjoy the journey. Uh, we'll interact with people and it will be more educative and uh, we can show the whole world that we are able to field the whole world through the agribusiness sector which we are doing. Thank you very much. So this is this is my home, and I work just outside my home. And um, we do a lot of things. You know, we go to see. These five ponds, we are calling them nursing ponds. So these are where we keep the fingerlings, which are ready for market, or I would say which are which have been uh, sex reversed. Because when we get eggs from the from the ponds down there, we take them into the hatchery and give them hormones for 28 days. Once we give them hormones for 28 days, then they actually uh, their sex reverses so that we have like 90% male, and that's what most farmers prefer mm -hmm. because, as you know, males grow bigger and faster. They don't waste time taking uh, carrying children. <laughs> Yeah, so that is that is what we have here. So basically, these are waiting for market, and uh, these are waiting for market. You can see the various ages. We're actually selling this one starting at two shillings per fingerling, and as they mature, as they grow older, which is just like wine, their prices their prices uh, appreciate. So the least you're selling is two shillings. And the maximum we've ever sold is 10 shillings of fingerlings. We find the big ones are on that pond. So as they grow, they appreciate. So these ones, we are still doing sex reversal for the tilapia. So all these are tilapia except these ones here, which are catfish. As I told you, when we go there, we can see, we want to see. The inside, they are very tiny. So we actually to start collecting this water. It goes. When it comes, it's filtered. This up here is filtered. It's actually going. It's being pumped. Which comes here. Here there are a lot of biology, so I don't know what it's called. Someone designed for me. So it's being filtered here and comes back. Again, we're using a solar. We just take it around. So that you use it little water. Yeah. And uh, for those ones to know, these, are, these were eggs a few hours ago. So these ones, we got them from the mother. And uh, if I close down, maybe you can see the eggs. So these are already eggs. Well, in the morning, they were just all of them were eggs. But uh, we keep them here and they hatch. So these are a few hours old. For me, can you see? Because we have a dark set reversal. We make sure they are 100% or 90% are male. Because we have a dark set reversal for around one month. Because we have a dark set reversal for around one month. Because we have Around one month. I started this farm three years ago 
first of all, I started by doing cage fish, cage farm, cage farming. I have uh, quite a number of cages in the lake. So th then I was working in Nairobi. My background is an engineer. I studied at Mombasa University many years ago. I've worked, I've done a lot of production. I worked in different companies now, totaling almost 30 years, different farms. The, my last employment was with an NGO called Kickstart International. I can see the emblem here. That's where I work, and I was the design engineer. I was the one designing most of the equipment that uh, they are selling. So I left six months ago to come and do my farming, which I had started. So I needed to come and create a difference, because I felt that there's a lot of opportunities in this part of the world. And my, my community generally are fish farmers. And as time goes, I could see that the fish stock in the lake was dwindling, was reducing with time. And uh, these people never, never had an opportunity of what else to do when the fish is depleted. So I thought that with my knowledge, with my education, and the small finances I had, we were able to, to make a difference for people and create for my people an opportunity. So I started fish farming, and that's why I started learning. And I learned, yes, fish farming is, has potential and is an opportunity, but uh, there are still a lot of bottleneck for, for, for good fish farming. Like there were no, there were no available feeds were not available, and when they are available, they are very, very expensive. Fingerlings, or we, what we call seeds, were not readily available as one would want to. Because as, as I told you that to, for you to get fingerlings, there were very few, few hatcheries, and one had to go and book for several months before getting. So I felt as an opportunity that we can do, we can create fingerlings so that fish farmers can easily access fingerlings for their cages. We can have feed so that the farmers can easily access feed. And uh, as a community, as a people, we grow fish for our community, we create employment for our community, and we create food for our community. And also to allow the lake to have the natural fish because overfishing, if people don't farm fish, then that means everybody has to go to look for fish in the lake. And that will not allow fish to grow. And as we, can, as we know right now, there are not fish anymore in the lake. Because six years ago, there could be a lot of um, boats catching fish. But as you can see, there's actually nothing right now. So this is a big plus to the community. And uh, we can see community really appreciating. Right now, we've uh, created employment. We have 18 people working with us. All of them are able to put food in their table and uh, we are growing. The potential is huge and uh, if I talk of obstacle, right, currently the biggest challenge for us now is power. Yeah, most of the things we are trying to do, we are using solar and you can know solar is actually the most effective but it's actually very, very expensive. We have uh, great power, that's KPLC, but uh, it's very, very unreliable. Like for the whole week we have not worked because power is not stable. Sometimes it comes, it's not stable, you cannot use it, but most of the time it's not there even at all. Thank you so much for watching this channel and stay tuned for the next episode under this program and under this topic on sustainable fish farming. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and share the link, leave us a comment for whatever you have, you have learned in this channel. I'm your host, Anne Kelly. Thank you.